and welcome to Squire's training on job costing. My name is Jennifer Amos. I am a QuickBooks Pro Advisor specializing in construction and contracting clients. In this video, we're going to be going over QuickBooks Desktop. Our company that we're going to be showing examples on is QuickBooks Desktop Premier. Um, you can use QuickBooks Desktop Pro or follow along with QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise. Keep in mind with QuickBooks Pro that um, there aren't any industry specific reports that are going to be available on Pro. And then in Enterprise, of course, there's a ton more features available um, within the Enterprise Edition. Um, but for this particular example, we're going to be going over QuickBooks Premiere. Um, if you would like to follow along in either your own company or a sample company, you are welcome to. Um, I have started on the screen so that if you do you want to use a sample company instead of your own? All you need to do is click on here, open a sample file, and a contractor business is what we originally based this file upon. So I'm going to go ahead and go into our Squire sample company. Now for this particular training, we're going to be going over customer and job setup. QuickBooks Desktop doesn't have a module that's like projects uh, within QBO. If you've watched our QBO job costing training, um, projects now has some project management features that we haven't seen uh, get pushed into desktop. Um, we're not sure if they are going to, to offer that within desktop. Um, however, you know, with, with desktop, kind of where there's the advantage is that you have a lot more reports available to you and your desktop product can hold a lot more information um, than several of the QBO products. All right, so up here, here is where you have your customer center. And so with setting up your customers, there's a, a couple options that you can do. You can have your, your parent customers, you can have your sub customers. As you can see, there's customer and jobs. So anything that is underneath a parent customer is a job. So for example, there's Beamer Homes and then there's Beamer Homes with a colon BH-Lot1, Lot2, Lot3, Lot4, and so forth. And if you want to, you can actually change the view setting and switch it to hierarchical view. And then this will indent all of your jobs so that it's easier for you to identify which ones are your parent, your your parent customers and which ones are your jobs. And then to create um, a new customer or job, you can either come up here to the new customer or job. If you want to, you can add in multiple customers and jobs. Let me just show you the screen really, really quick. So this works a lot like an Excel template. You can, if you have an Excel spreadsheet that has all of your customer and all of your job information, you can actually copy from that Excel file that you have, just make sure that these columns up at the top match the name, company name, full customer, slash, or colon, job name, and job description. Um, and then that way you can make sure that, that basically you can really just copy, paste all the way over, and then as you make changes, so for example, I can change here and say Gordon and June Schultz. And I can tell it to save changes and it'll tell you how many customer records have been updated. If you want to add in any columns, you'd go to customize columns. Of course, it shows up on my other screen. And then you can add in different pieces of information, such as if you want to bulk add in uh, credit limits, new account numbers, job statuses. There's a lot of different pieces of information that you can capture within your customer center. And then you can also um, move the columns as well. So that's the bulk entry. You also have the ability to right click and just add new customer. And so the first screen will have your address information. You will want to have your customer name. Generally, we recommend that you don't use the opening balance um, because you'll want to actually enter in some of the details about that customer. And you're not really able to do that in an opening balance. Um, it just basically drops that information um, into AR and then into opening balance equity. Then you have payment settings. If you have a merchant services account, you can add in their information on here. 
For example, this connects with Intuit, um, Intuit payments and you can process uh, credit cards and bank transfers through here. If they need sales tax, you can track their resale exempt, their exemption certificate here, um, as well as add in tax codes and tax items if you have sales tax that needs to be collected. Additional information, um, you can add in a customer type, you can add in a rep. Define fields is where you can add in other types of, of, P, of information that you want to have as a customer. Um, this is a little bit limited on Premier. Enterprise has a lot more options for, for custom fields. And then you can also mark whether it's just for customer, if you want to add it to vendor, if you want to add it to employee as well. And then job information, you know, are, is there a specific job type that you're doing, such as if you want to check change orders, if you want to look at commercial versus residential, um, you can add in those type of details here. You can choose a job status. Unfortunately, these can't be altered. It's either one of these statuses if you decide to do that. You can add a start date, projected end date, as well as a finalized end date. And then with the jobs, so you can add job. And again, it's a very similar screen. And then up here is where you would tell it which customer you want to add that to. Do you want to add it as, um, as a job that's underneath a customer or do you want to add, add it as a sub job? We do recommend that you are careful with the number of sub jobs that you use because of the way that QuickBooks structures your, your reports. It gets more difficult to read the with the increased number um, under of sub jobs underneath each other. Um, so we generally recommend you keep it to about two, no more than three. And again, it's a similar thing. You can add in details regarding um, that particular job. Does it have different contact details? Does it have a different address that you need to be concerned with? Um, such as if you're working for a customer, but say they have one job that's in Orem, but they have another job that you're working on in South Jordan. In the job level, you can go ahead and have different addresses for those. And then again, it has payment settings if you decide to bill your job separately from the customer. Um, again, with the additional info, you can add that in as well. And then you can also in, add in job information as well. All right, so how do I actually enter in this information within QuickBooks Desktop? So there are uh, customer fields that pop up in various forms within your, your QuickBooks file. So for example, if you are entering in a bill, and say, I have to purchase um, some materials. Say, no wood for project. Once I spell it correctly, if you have problems seeing information that's on the right hand side of the screen, which this is the part where you can link it to customers. If you see where those three little dots are, you can just hover over it until that shows up. And then you can add in here your different jobs. So if you do a drop down, again, you have your customer and then you have your jobs and they're all clearly labeled over on the right side for you. So I can add it in here. This is a little difficult to read, so I'm going to go ahead and spread that out. So billable. So if you track something as billable, what that means is that I want to track this, track this expense as something separate that I want to be able to pull into an invoice when I'm invoicing this customer. So I'm just going to note that this is for lot 11. And yes, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as billable. We do have classes set up, which is why we have this pop up here. And then for my customers, so there's a couple of different ways you can invoice, either from customers, create invoices, do transactions, invoices, or you can even do control I, and that will pull up the invoice. So I want to invoice that particular item that's on lot one. And let's see. Ah, here it is over on my other screen. So it's going to tell me that we have some available estimates. Would I like to add it in? And I do not want to add in my estimates. I have billable time costs. 
So I have the option of either selecting the outstanding billable time and cost to add to this invoice, or I can exclude outstanding billable time and costs at this time. Although you can add them later if you use this button up here, add time slash costs. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, I want to go ahead and add it in. And then if you have anything like a timesheet where you're going and coding that to a customer or a job, that will show up in this screen. If you have expenses like that, that a uh, bill that I just showed you for Home Depot, I can add it on here. If I want to, I can add up a markup amount directly on here, and I can even put it to a separate account if I decide that I want to be able to check up my markup separately. If you have any mileage that's coded to your customer um, within the, the payroll center, that can also be pulled in here. And then if you purchased any items um, and coded it specifically to an item as opposed to an expense account, that will show up here. So for example, if instead of entering that Home Depot as an expense, if I had purchased inventory and tracked it as um, you know, specific items within my inventory, I can pull that in through here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a markup of 1.5. I want that to go to global expense income, click OK. Oh, and you do have an option to print selected time and costs as one invoice item if you want to. So say, so if I don't check this, any individual item that I pull in from the screen will show up as a separate line. But if I click this, it will just show up as one invoice item. Since there's only one item, I'm not going to worry. So add time and costs. I need to check that and say OK. And voila, here it is. And if I want to, I can edit the description, but it is linking that vendor invoice from Home Depot to this invoice. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. Then another thing to keep in mind too, is as you're entering in the information into QuickBooks and using all that customer information, if you go into reports under, let's see, I actually wanna look at my profit and loss by job. There we go. And I have a lot more information that's actually back in 2019 on this file. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. As you can see, we have um, Beamer Homes lot 1, 2, 10, 11. And then at the end, I have this total Beamer Homes. So any any sub um, subcategory under customers. So say you have the customer, a job. If you have a sub job underneath that, there's going to be two tiers that are that are totaled. Um, and so it makes it more confusing if you have multiple layers of, um, of customer job and sub jobs. So that's why we generally recommend that you don't do more than, than two, um, three at the most. Because again, it will, um, it will go ahead and total that at the end. So as you can see, we have our income, our cost of goods sold, any job costs incurred. Um, and then if you need to see any details, you could go ahead and click in here and find out more information about those. Let's see if there is another report that would be helpful. There is the ability to look at income by customer summary or detail as well. Um, if you'd like to see how much income you've received um, per customer. All right, well, that's it for our QuickBooks training on customers and jobs. This is some of the, the basics. We hope that you will go ahead and join us for more of our QuickBooks trainings in the future. Thank you.